basically I'm going to be reading again quite a lot of scripture so you don't need to stand unless you just feel compelled to do so. Luke chapter 2 beginning with verse number 4 down to verse 12. Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And so for a little while this evening, I'm going to try to preach on this subject, Tower of Edar. All right. Some of you heard a little preview of this at the rally in College Station. But I want to try to bring some things out here. First of all, we know that they went to Bethlehem. And while they were in Bethlehem, we know that the Virgin Mary began to get to the time of giving birth to Jesus. We always think that because there was no room in the inn, that the innkeeper just threw them out in a manger in the back lot. You're going to find that wasn't the case. As we see, there were shepherds in the same country. That means they were in the region of Bethlehem. Amen. And then as we begin to look at this, I find this very interesting that the sign to the shepherds was not a star. All right. It wasn't a star. It, was, it says here, and the sign shall be unto you, you shall find... The babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. How in the world were they going to find that manger in a region where there were numerous mangers of all different kind of animals? There had to be a way that these shepherds knew without a shadow of a doubt where this Savior was laid and why he was being swapped, wrapped in swaddling clothes. All right. Amen. Genesis 35, verses 16 through 21. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephraim. Okay, this is Jacob with his clan, and they're traveling, and they're going to Bethel, and they were but a little way. And Rachel travailed, uh -huh. and she had hard love. Now we know that he really loved Rachel more than Leah, don't we? Right. And so this was kind of the apple of his eye, and here she is giving birth to her second child. Let's see what happens. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. All right. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, she died. For she died, that she called his name Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. Amen. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath. She was buried on the way to Bethlehem. He was going to Bethlehem. Keep this in mind. Which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. He put a stone there and it's there to this day. And then the Bible says in verse 21. And Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edom. What tower? Tower of Edom. So we know it exists by scripture. We know it is in the region of Bethlehem, probably just on the outskirts of Bethlehem. So it was called Bethlehem. If we could look at its mailing address, if it had a mailing address, it would have Bethlehem on that. And so here was Israel, Jacob. He lost his beloved wife, 
great. So he gained Benjamin, but he didn't stay there mourning too long. He marked the grave, and he went on to Bethlehem to a certain tower, Tower of Edar. Micah 4 and 8, what does it say? And thou, O tower of the flock, uh -huh. the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. So now we're looking at this tower, this tower of Edar, and here Micah is calling it the tower of the flock. So here was a tower of Edar right there in Bethlehem where the shepherds came down. This tower was used for twofold purposes, but they were there in the fields of Bethlehem. Bethlehem is not far from Jerusalem. In fact, if you get to a certain advantage in Jerusalem, you can look over and you can see the city of Bethlehem right there in the horizon. And so here we see Micah saying, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Unto thee shall it come, uh -huh. even the first dominion. First dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Let me tell you some things about this tower that we know through Scripture. We understand that this tower of Edar was set there for twofold purposes. You're going to have to listen to get this so that when I get to the place, you'll understand why this is important. Here in this tower, it had an upper part of it where the shepherds would be the watchmen, where they would go up and top of this tower and they would begin to look and see if there was any enemies coming a wolf or, or a bear or what have you and so they could rush out and protect the sheep but down below this tower there was a place called a manger and this manger was the birthing place for sheep to give birth to lambs that were going to be used for sacrifice and so down below the tower it was a manger a manger that only sheep could be in there was no donkeys there was no cows there was no pigs there was nothing but sheep because it had to be kept undefiled it had to be kept clean so i'm here to tell you we better relook at where jesus christ the lamb of god was born hallelujah right. every shepherd knew where the tower of edar was and every shepherd understood what his purpose was. Not every lamb made it. Not every lamb made the cut. Not every lamb was without blemish. Not every lamb could go and be a sacrificial lamb. It had to be without blemish. It had to be without spot. It had to be without any injury. And so there were some things that they did Amen. Right. to ensure that. All right. So I want you to get a picture of this tower. All through the Bible, all through the Bible, you read about towers. Where do you think the watchman went? He went on the tower. All right. So that he would have an advantage to see. And to see the adversary coming way before he got to the camp. But what I really enjoyed learning was beneath this tower was a manger used for birthing of sacrifice to God. Let me read some scriptures to you very quickly that we know that Jesus Christ is the sacrificial lamb of God. John 1, 29, Jesus there. John proclaimed of Jesus, what did he say? Behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Here comes Jesus to be baptized, uh, hey, to be fulfilling righteousness. And his cousin looked out and he said, Behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He was about 30 years old. How come he was without spot or blemish? Something had to take place at his birth. Something had to take place when he was born of a virgin. Something had to take place to ensure that he would be without blemish and without spot. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. I can't even hardly contain myself because I'm feeling the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost. We see that in 1 Peter 1 and 19, we hear Peter saying that redemption was wrought by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, what did he say? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that he may be a new lump. As ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So we're seeing scriptures without a doubt that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He is 
the lamb without blemish. He is sufficient to take away sins. He is that lamb that was protected at birth so that he could be presented a sacrifice one day on Golgotha's hill, shed his blood, that you and I could have hope of forgiveness of sin. Revelation 5 tells us without a doubt as well that Christ is to be revealed in heaven as the Lamb. Amen. So as we begin to look at this, we begin to go back to what we think is of the Christmas story. It's more than a story. It happened. She was great with child when they made the journey. They went to Bethlehem and all of a sudden she began to have birth pains and so they wanted to get a room God wasn't going to let them be born in an inn because he couldn't be the sacrificial lamb there was only one place I said there was only one place in Bethlehem there was no other place in all of Judea come on God had it planned that moved on a heathen to say you got to go to Bethlehem to be taxed did you understand what I'm saying sometimes God will use the heathen to have would take a woman that's close to childbirth and travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Right, right. So he had no choice. God made it where he had no choice. Right. They couldn't go earlier because she wouldn't be ready to give birth. Right, right. The birth couldn't be premature. No. Right, right. right. Come on, right. It had to be the right time, the right place for the right birth so that Christ could be the Lamb of God. And so God allowed a ruler, the, the greed. I think that's what's happening to our rulers and our government. Here they go. They go down. All of a sudden, she tells Joseph, it's time, Joseph. They didn't call 911 then. There was no paramedics. All right. Right? They went to the end, and the end said, hey, no way. I mean, they weren't even married. Right. Amen. Right, right. They were just a spouse to be married. They weren't even married. Right. Right. Yet Jesus was holy. Amen. Yes, amen. Mary knew, never knew a man. Right. What was conceived of her was of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Amen. And so the end turned them away, but. Hey, he didn't say go out in the back, into the room in the back, in the manger where I keep the animals and the hay in the field. Go out there. No. Oh, no. They looked and they looked. There was no place to go. And all of a sudden, they saw a tower. All of a sudden, they see something in the horizon. And all of a sudden, Joseph said, wait a minute. Let's go check that out. Let's see if there's room there in the bottom. And I believe with all of my heart, there in that manger, in the bottom of the tower of the flock, in the bottom of the tower he dog, where shepherds were abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Mary gave birth uh, to the Savior of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Friend of mine, there could not be any other animals there. You got a manger scene in your house, you better take those animals out because there's no way God would allow a cow, no way he would allow a goat, no way he would allow anything in there because they might step up on the Son of God ruin a leg. They may cause a blemish. He was going to keep him there for a reason. Now, let me tell you something. In my studies that I found out about swaddling, I mean, we still do that today. Right. Why do we do it today? To prevent the child from hurting themselves. Right. Yeah, when they're born, they come out, what's the first thing you do? Come on, nurse. Well, uh, yes, dear, but you clean them up. Got to clean them up because you don't want to put all that, you know, what uh, in, in a clean swaddle. Right. So you clean them up. Well, that's exactly what they did in Judea's time. That's exactly what they did. When a baby was born, they washed that baby with water. And guess what they did next? Something that's going to blow your mind. Next thing they did is they took salt and they rubbed all over that baby. After they washed that baby, they took salt. Why? Salt Ooh, is the sanctification, a purification. And so I'm telling you right now, when Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, when he came out of the womb, the first thing they did 
was to wash him with waters that the mother lambs drank out of. Oh, how that the baby lambs drank out of. They washed him and they had salt there, honey. I'm telling you, they had salt there. And then they was, he was rough all over his body with salt. No wonder he said, you are the salt of the yeah. earth. And the salt that's not the Savior is good for nothing. But be cast out into the dung hill. No wonder he wants our speech to be seasoned with salt. No wonder he's talking about a sanctification and a purification process that comes into play with the saints of God. When these lambs were born... In the manger of the tower of Edar, the tower of the flock, where the first dominion would come. They swallowed those lambs. Can you imagine how those lambs were kicking? Have you ever, have you ever just held a newborn baby and you're trying to wrap them in a blanket? Huh? Whew, man, their arms are flooding. Their legs are crying. They, don't, they just come out of a confined space. Why are you doing this to me? Let me lose. Oh yeah, he, he waited and Lazarus died, was dead four days. But before they wrapped him in cloth for that linen wrapping all around him, they cleaned his body. They put ointments around him and they wrapped him. Oh hallelujah. They wrapped him waiting for the Messiah, waiting for the Lamb of God. And when the life got to the tomb, those that were dead in that tomb had to come to life. What was the first thing he said when Lazarus came out? He said, loose him and let him go. I can just imagine as the shepherds saw that mother lamb giving birth, they were praying, is this going to be without spot? Is this one going to be without limits? Is this one going to be the next one that the high priest offers on the day of atonement? Is this going to be sufficient? When that lamb came out, they grabbed it carefully away from the mother because the mother sometimes in her zeal and excitement could enter the lamb. They begin to wash it. They begin to use salt. And then they took strips of cloth. Hear me? Strips of cloth, not blanket, not blanket. And they begin to wrap up that lamb tight. They begin to wrap up the legs and the arms. The lamb was crying. The lamb was hungry. But the shepherd knew, I've got to protect this lamb because it's dedicated to God. I've got to protect this lamb because it's dedicated to the one that we serve. And so, Jesus, same thing happened to him. They took strips of cloth. Strips of cloth. After he was washed and salted, and they wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Doesn't the Bible say clothes? Doesn't say clothes. Doesn't say cloth, blanket, clothes, just like the sheep's were. Why did they wrap it in swaddling clothes? Because already in the manger, already in the bottom of the tower of the flock, they already had all of the strips of cloth ready for the lambs that were going to be born in the season that the sheep gave birth. So they didn't have to go looking for the water. They didn't have to go looking for the salt. They didn't have to go looking for the material to wrap the Lamb of God in swaddling clothes. And so there was no need for the shepherds to have a star. The wise men didn't know anything about this. The wise men never mentioned the Tower of Edar. The wise men didn't know about the sacrificial lamb. So God had to give them a star. He had to give them a benchmark. He had to put them a drop pin, so to speak. The shepherds knew. As soon as the angel said, this is a sign unto you, you shall... <laughs> Right. They were there keeping their flock, yeah. waiting for the next mother lamb. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is going to be laying down? We can't let them do it in the field. We got to get them up and take them to the manger. They were right there. They didn't have far to go. They understood. This is a sign unto you, shepherds. 
told you're going to find a babe lying in a manger, which was the manger of the Tower of Edar on the outskirts of Bethlehem. And you're going to find him wrapped in swallowing clothes. Amen. Yeah. They didn't have to go to knock on every manger door. They didn't have to check out every manger. They went right to the tower of the flock, the tower of the Edar. And there, beneath that tower, there was Mary that had given birth. The babe was cleansed, the babe was salted, and the babe was laid, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, let me kind of bring this to us today, if I could. Pastors are those same shepherds. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. I gotta get a lot of swaddling because there's some there's some lambs out there that need a lot of cleansing. All right, amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Oh, there's a bunch of you need a lot of salt in your life. Mrs. Right. Sterl. Thank, Thank you, Lord. I don't know how they did it then, but this is Sterl. Until I touch it, of course. But it's touched by the shepherd's hand. Amen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is. Just, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Wow. Kind of resembles a delete. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! All right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's another nugget I just got. The Bible says that God has entrusted his sheep to the under shepherd. Why? To be a watchman on top of the tower, but at the same time be sure the manger beneath the tower is ready for some of you to give birth. All right. Hey, come on. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 17, this may give you a different look at obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Oh, hallelujah. Not submitting just to a man, but to an under shepherd. Because there's a lot of swaddling to do at times, and it's uncomfortable. You don't like it. You squirm. You holler. You get mad. You get upset. You want to run. But the pastor's got to swaddle you, whether you want it or not. Because in Romans 12, 1 and 2, God wants you to present your bodies a living sacrifice. And you can't do that if there's a blemish. You can't do that if your attitude's not right. You can't do that if you're in rebellion. You can't do that if you're pricking the fighting against the prick. You cannot do that. That sheep had to submit to the shepherd. Amen. And the mother sheep had to let it happen. Yes. Yes, amen. Oh. Yes. Right. All right. Oh. All right. Yeah, when the pastor's on one of your loved ones and trying to help them and he gets on to them and tell them to pay attention and quit being distracted and looking at their phone or taking notes right. for somebody else, not what I'm saying and things of that nature. Oh, you might get a little upset. Maybe he mentioned something. All I'm trying to do is take a sheep and swaddle them. All I'm trying to do is be sure that when the time comes they're a living sacrifice. When the time comes, oh, they're acceptable unto God. It's their reasonable service. And at times I may come to you and look you right in the eye you know I'm preaching. Oh, and it gets under your skin. You better look at it differently now and you better obey and submit because all I'm trying to do is wrap you in swaddling clothes so that you can be a living sacrifice. Oh, holy. Blameless. This is tremendous preaching. Amen. Why, why, why would you want to resist the swaddle? Amen. If we're honest, many of us have. Because you took it too much as a man against man or a man against woman or too much personal that I had something against you. All right. Come on. It had nothing to do with that. Amen. I was doing what God instructed me to do. Yeah. I'm in the field. Am I not in the field? Am I not in the field? Day and night? This is the field. I'm keeping watch over the flock of God. I'm looking for enemies. I'm looking to see who may be blemished. You cannot, I'm going to tell you something. You can't afford to be blemished. 
blemish. But oh, if you are, you better come back and look for God for cleansing. But when that cleansing happens, you better be ready because you better be swaddled once again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Preaching can be abrasive. Right. The swallowing was abrasive. Right. Some of you in the medical field, when you bandage things, some of them have to be tighter than others. Right. Some of them cause pain. All right. People are yelling at you, getting mad at you, look at you like you're crazy. What are you doing? I came in for help and you're hurting me. Right. I came in here for you to stop the bleeding and you're causing it to bleed more. All right. All right. I came in here for you to show up the wound and you're opening it up and washing it and cleansing it and put things in it that burn. All right. All right. All right. Well, sometimes when you come in here, you got a wound because of the world. You got a wound because you're doing things you ought not do. It may not be terrible sin, but it is in rebellion or disobedience. You got a wound. And when you come in, the preaching has got to open that wound up. It's got to open that wound up. It cannot heal. Oh. The outside, but the inside is still a wound that affects you. It's got to heal. And so the word of God opens it up, and the word of God begins to be a ointment that causes you more pain. It burns sometimes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Thank Just give you a little insight of what yeah. preachers should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. They shouldn't ignore where you're at if it's not the right place with God. That's right. Yes, sir. They shouldn't be afraid of confrontation with you. All right. They should look to do it as peacefully as they can. But I shouldn't be afraid of you to come to you and say what you're doing isn't right. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you should be welcoming it. You shouldn't be saying, oh, what's the pastor want now? He called me in his office. Some of you have been in my office and I didn't want anything, but general information. Right. All right. Went, oh. Why would you do that? If I called you in to talk to you about something that was swaddling, you ought to be jumping for joy, whether you see it or not. Maybe the watchman's been in prayer. Maybe the watchman's been on the tower. They can see something headed your way that you can't see that. Maybe you think you're all right now, but oh, I see a wound starting up. I see something beginning to rise up on your skin. I begin to see something in your arm or your leg that you are unaware of. I say, come on in and sit down. Come on in because I got to wrap this tight. Yes, amen. 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 Woo. Oh, I wish. I wish preaching. Of course, wish it doesn't do anything. The church of the living God, not just here. As Brother... Spike said, you people respond more than some folks he's ever preached to. But the point is, even in this service, there are some people right. that are not listening to what I'm saying. Right. And I'm preaching with everything that's within me. Right. I'm trying Amen. to give you some insight of what I do yes. to get you to understand <laughs> that if you're calling me and I say no, All right. Amen. don't leave pouting. Right. Leave, well, that's another swallow. One day, maybe you'll take that off. All right. Amen. All right. All right. Yes. How did Lazarus feel the day that they took all his swallowing off? How did he feel? He felt free. He felt revived. He was hungry. So the day that I wrap you up, you may not be hungry right then, but the day God begins to unwrap you, the day you begin to grow, the day you begin to mature, Pastors are too timid. I'm not saying they should abuse their office. Right. But they're too timid. They know things are happening in the sanctuary. They know people are not where they need to be. And instead of going and just speaking a word to them and saying, where are you at right now? Right. Where's your mind? Where's your heart? It's coming. I sense it's coming. Yes. Amen. It's coming. Jesus. Oh, glory to the Lord. Swaddling is important. Amen. You can't be saved without it because you're not going to heaven until you're a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Holy. 
Tower of Idar. The major beneath that was where the Lord Jesus Christ was born. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. As they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable. You see, the shepherd they caught that lamb that was born and swallowed that lamb. But let's say that lamb kicked away that swallow and injured his leg. It wasn't unprofitable for the shepherd. It was unprofitable for the lamb. The shepherd would once again catch another lamb. The shepherd again would continue to try until it had enough lambs to present. But the lamb that resisted the lamb that let their mind wander in a service All right. or made up their mind that tonight pastor is not going to preach to me. Oh my. Tonight, no matter what he says, I, I'm going to let my mind be closed and my heart be closed. Well, then one day you might have a different talk of swallow. All right. Yes. It won't be sterile. It won't be put on with love. It'll be called change. That's right. That's right. You see, the enemy does the same thing. Come on. I mean, the Lord is really helping me tonight. I hope you're still with me in this. When you walk away from the under shepherd of God, the adversary with his chains of bondage is out there and he'll grab you whether you want him to or not. He is so sly you won't even know that he's done got one chain around you. Right. And before you know it, there's another. And before you know it, there's another. And before you know it, you can hardly breathe. You're so overwhelmed. You're so out of breath. You're so weary with life. You say, what in the world is going on? You've been swallowed all right, but it wasn't with the hand of an under-shepherd. It wasn't with a destroyer who came to kill, steal, 